All right, thanks for watching, and today I will present an awesome proof of the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. But before I do that, I would really like to thank Alex Zorba for this proof, because he's the one who provided me with this proof. And it's very neat, you'll see all the, um, all it necessitates is just very basic calculus. So not even integrals, just derivatives. But first of all, in case you don't know what the arithmetic and geometric means are, let me give you a very simple example. So consider three numbers. Let's say a1 equals to 1, a2 equals to 2, and a3 equals to 3. On the one hand, you can consider the average, you know, just like in classes, you know, the mean of, you know, um, the group weights. And let's call it alpha. And in other words, this is an arithmetic mean because you can compare it to something else, which I'll talk about in a second. But in this case, it's just a1 plus a2 plus a3 over 3. So you sum everything up and you normalize it by dividing it by the number of terms. And in this case, if you do that, you get 6 over 3, which is 2. Okay. That's one way of considering this, by taking the sum of the values and dividing it by the number of values. Turns out, there's also another way of doing this, um, taking a mean. What do you mean? which is called the geometric mean. And all you do, instead of adding up the values, you multiply them. So a1 times a2 times a3. And then, this might get very big, but in order to have a number which makes more sense, in this case, instead of dividing it by 3, you take the cube root of 3. So 1 over the number of values, and if you do that, you get 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6, and you have the cube root, and if you like, this is roughly 1.817. And now notice, so those are two ways of taking the mean of something, and if you compare those two numbers, 2 and 1.817, you notice that this number is bigger than this one. In other words, in this example, the arithmetic mean is greater than the geometric mean. And in fact, turns out this is always true, and this is what's called the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So note, in this case, AM is greater or equal to GM, and the theorem is, If all those values are positive, if ai, oops, <laughs> there it is, okay, is positive for all i, then if you take the arithmetic mean, so if you take a1 plus blah 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 plus an divided by n, this is always greater or equal to the product a1 up to a of the nth root of this. In other words, again, the arithmetic mean is greater or equal to the geometric mean. So, good thing that your classes are not curved by the geometric mean, because the arithmetic mean is better. Um, and of course, you might say, okay, great, but it turns out this is one of the theorems where I think the proof is even more amazing than the theorem itself. So, let me prove this. And again, proof due to Alex Orba. Okay, step one. Let's show something that at first sight has nothing to do with the AMGM inequality. Namely, let's show or let's claim that e to the x minus 1 is always greater or equal to x. So, in other words, if you divide e to the x by the number e, it's always greater or equal to x. And this is a very typical, you know, Calc 1 exercise. 
Because in order to show a function is positive, or, or in order to show an inequality, let's consider the difference. So proof that f of x be e to the x minus 1 minus x. And let's hope that we can show that f of x is greater or equal to 0. And in general, this thing doesn't work. But luckily, in calculus classes, this technique does work. So first of all, let's calculate the derivative and figure out where the derivative is 0. Because the idea is you want to use some critical point argument and maybe show that the minimum of f is 0. So let's calculate f prime, f prime of x. Well, derivative of e to the x minus 1 is still e to the x minus 1. And then the derivative of x equals to 1. And let's now figure out when this is 0. So f prime of x equals to 0 if and only if e to the x minus 1 equals to 1. But remember, 1 is e to the 0. And so e to the something equals to e to the something if and only if those two things are equal. So x minus 1 equals to 0 if and only if x equals to 1. So if we want to draw this on a table, we get if x goes to minus infinity, 1 and infinity, then f prime at 1 it's 0, and also almost analogous, uh, in an analog, you know, in an equivalent way, okay, it's easier to pronounce, you can show that on this interval, minus 1 to minus infinity to 1, the derivative is negative, and on this interval, the derivative is positive. What does that tell us about our function? Well, again, from calculus, it tells us that the function is decreasing here and increasing here. Which still doesn't show that it's non-negative, but luckily, if you take f of 1, right, it's e to the 1 minus 1 minus 1. That's e to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So, whew, luckily, in this case, we find that f decreases to 0 and then increases from 0 on. So f looks something like that. At 1, it's 0, and then everywhere else it's decreasing and then increasing. So, in fact, f of x is greater or equal to 0. This function is greater or equal to 0, and therefore, I hid it, but let me unhide it. We get e to the x minus 1 is greater or equal to x. So the calculus part of us is very satisfied. All right, second step. Remember, previously in pi m Battlestar Galactica, we've shown that e to the x minus 1 is greater or equal to x. But now, how can we use this? Well, of course you want to figure out, you know, plug in the terms of our arithmetic geometric mean inequality. But just one little intuition, the nice thing is e to the x, it converts sums into products. And that's why we chose e to the x, because somehow it gives us the, the connection between products, so, you know, or in between sums, so arithmetic stuff, and products, geometric stuff. So this motivates us to say, let, now let x equals to ai over alpha for each i. I. Well, I would like to remind you that alpha is just the arithmetic mean, a1 plus dot 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 plus an over n. So, what do we get here? We have that, first of all, e to the alpha 1, a1 one over alpha minus 1 is greater or equal to a1 over alpha. 
That's just by plugging in x equals to a1 over alpha. Now, let's do the same spiel and do with a2. a2 over alpha minus 1 is greater or equal to a2 over alpha. And then you can do the same thing and you get that e to the e squared, but okay, e to the a n over alpha minus one is greater or equal to a n over alpha. Great. Okay. And by the way, you know, just a little thing. When is this? When do we have an equality here? It's precisely when this thing is equal to that, and it's precisely, remember, this function is zero if and only if x equals to one. And that's the case if and only if this thing equals to that. So note equality when, if you want, a one over alpha equals to one. And I'll talk about that in a second. What do we have? We have a bunch of inequalities, and then the next thing to do, because we ideally we would like to have a product of things, is simply to multiply those things out. So you do this times this times this is greater or equal to this times this times this times this. And then if you do all this thing, you have e to the alpha 1 minus 1 over, sorry, e to the a1 over alpha minus 1 times e to the a2 over alpha minus 1 dot 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 e to the a n over alpha minus 1 is greater or equal to the product of all this junk greater or equal to a1 over alpha a2 over alpha dot 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 a n over alpha. And by the way, this is where we use the fact that all the a i's are positive. So we didn't multiply a positive number with a negative number, which would destroy our inequality. And second remark, now we have a product of everything. And remember e, you know, e to the something converts uh, products into sums. And again, we have this connection now between arithmetic means and geometric means. Okay, so now if we multiply everything out, we indeed get e to the, if you want, a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus a n over alpha. So you just sum everything up and you have a common factor of one over alpha. And then the other thing is you sum up ones but how many times? n times. So you get this thing minus n is greater or equal to, again, a1 over alpha times a2 over alpha, etc., etc., which becomes a1, a2, dot, 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 a n over alpha. How many times? n times. Because you're multiplying things n times. So alpha to the n. Which is a better, you know, indication that you're right, because here we have sums of stuff, here we have products of stuff, so we're closer to our arithmetic geometric mean inequality. But, turns out this weird, you know, monster can be simplified. We like monsters, you know, but clean stuff up. A1, this thing, what does that equal to? Remember that alpha is just the uh, arithmetic mean. So it's a1 plus dot 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 plus a n over n. And notice you're in fact dividing this by this. So bang, bang, this cancels out. And in the end, this again, weird monster equals to n. Which is even better because this thing just equals to n and it in fact cancels out with this. So we have another you know, explosion. And in the end, what you have is e to the 0 is greater or equal to a1 dot 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 a n over alpha n 
drag it to the zero is one, cross multiply, you get alpha m is greater than or equal to the product of ax. And then, lastly, all you want to do is take the nth root, and again, everything is positive, so no worries about weird inequalities. You get alpha is greater than or equal to a1 dot 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 a n nth root, but remember that alpha is just the same as a1 plus dot 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 plus a n over n. So, lo and behold, we do get in the end our arithmetic geometric mean inequality, and then we are done, and we can go home happy. But just one little remark, so I erased something that was actually useful. Um, when is this an equality? Remember, at some point, like 10 minutes ago, I wrote that at some point we have an equality, if and only if, uh, a1, I guess a1 over alpha equals to 1, but of course this is also true for a2 up to an, because you've been using the same inequality. So it's the same if ai over alpha equals to 1, and that's the same as ai equals to alpha. In other words, we get an equality precisely when all the a1s, a2, a3, etc., etc., are equal. So that's for all i, and of course, what are they equal to? They're equal to their mean. Right? Because if, if all the numbers are equal to 10, right, then their arithmetic mean is 10. And of course, the geometric mean is also 10. 10 out of 10, it's a good number. Okay. <laughs> and yes, again, if you like this and like other math things, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. And thank you again, Alex Orba, for this wonderful suggestion. Thank you.